requisite number of 24 to move the process to parliament. Other counties that have passed the bill include Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, West Pokot, Transoya, Busia and Kajado. It is only Baringo County Assembly that has so far rejected the bill. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News. To health matters now, the country has lost six more patients to COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, with the infection positivity rate rising to 5.8%. This is after 283 people tested positive for the novel coronavirus from 4,822 samples screened. As of Thursday, February 18th, 2021, the death toll from COVID-19 had increased to 1,807 and the case load at 103,650 respectively. 66 patients were discharged from various hospitals, 51 from home-based care and 15 from hospitals. So far, 85,457 patients have recovered from the deadly disease. From the new infections, Nairobi recorded 196 cases, Busia 16, Kiambu 14, Mombasa 11, Nakuru 8, Wasingishu 6, Kajiado and Machakos 5 cases, Kilifi and Kisumu 4 cases each, Kwale and Makweni recorded 3 cases each. Each Homa Bay, Taita Taveta, and Muranga two cases each, while Siaya and Migori recorded single cases. And a middle-aged man has surprised many after inventing a machine that detects locations where there is underground water. Stephen Mbugwa from Daragua, Nyandara County, says the machine, dubbed Magninometer, has capacity to show depth, quality and quantity of water in both arid and semi-arid areas with ease. Stephen Mbugwa is reaping the fruits of hard work. Stephen, a standard seven dropout, has invented a machine which detects underground water easily. It can detect the cabinet to the chimba maji, lazima to you a hio maji, ni maji, ikona chumvi, ama haina. Kutoka hapo, kashambalako labda kuna mito mimili, ama mitatu. He has named his innovation magnetometer. Bugwa earns between 10,000 and 150,000 shillings. He has traveled to Mombasa, Kwale, Machakos, Lake Kipia, Nyandarwa, Kapinguria, and Sudan to offer much needed services. To Kifika Mali Kunamaji, my Shinyangu in a pointer in a Catalia Hapo, Okipita, Manakuma Pita Sigino in a Rudi Numa, Okirudi Numa in a Quambo Pita Sigino in a Quambia and a Mbele. Bugwa, who previously thought of himself as an academic dwarf, now says he is a genius in innovation. Irene Mchuma Odim, Channel One. And Narrow County Commissioner Evans Achoki has sounded a strong warning to border border operators and residents who set ablaze Kisi, Kisi Deputy Governor Josh Manga's official vehicle on Wednesday evening. The administrator said police have launched investigations into the matter. More of this in our county news wrap. The commissioner in the company of county police, Commander Kizito Motoro, and two border border officials vowed to arrest and bring to book those involved in the criminal activity. According to the police, the official car of Kisi, Deputy Governor Josh Mangi, was touched by a irate mob after it was involved in a road accident along Narok Bomet Highway that left two people dead last evening. Na mimi nauliza wanainchi, wasijaribu kuchukua sheria kwa mikononi mwao Elsewhere, learning activities in Githithia Primary School in Nari Kiambiu County was Thursday paralyzed after a class 6 people died in Kenyatta Hostel where she was rushed after she was allegedly punished by a teacher on duty Kumuliza kwa nini anaumwa na kichwa ndio aliniambia kuna mwalimu alimgonga Pereka hospitali ya Kikuyu akapigwa picha hii na shida ikaonekana hapa sasa ilipoonekana tulitumwa wa Kinyata tuliweza kuwaeleza kwamba wapeleke eh, mwanafunzi hospitali as we do our investigation so and a section of legislators from Garissa County whose constituency hosts Somali refugees 
are expressing optimism development projects being implemented in the area, saying it will change the lives of their electorate for the better. The money which has been given for this uh, project mainly is going to uh, livelihood programs, water, education, health. Meanwhile, Kilifi County government has embarked on the improvement of infrastructure in its major towns in a bid to open up the area for development. And in Niri County, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industrial Chamber President Richard Gatia has appealed to the government to waive the 1% tax levied on business for three years as a way of ensuring their recovery following COVID-19 effects. A small trader, uh, as much as you have done business and as long as you have not even made a profit, you're still taxed 1%. So we want to see how that can be waived for another maybe two to three years to allow people really understand how to pay those taxes. Elsewhere, residents of Antubetwe village in Igembe, north sub-county of Meru County, are crying foul over water scarcity in the area that has also affected nearby schools. And finally, in Samburu County, area residents have urged government to reconsider its decision to increase fuel prices, saying the move will negatively affect the country's economy. Those stories from the counties bring us to our first break here on Business Insight this particular evening. Do stay with us here on Channel 1. We'll be back with more news, including the latest in business. Malaria ni ugonjwa hatari sana unaoua watu wengi hapa Kenya. Japo kuko na corona, hatari ya malaria bado iko. Mtoto huyu alikuwa na joto jingi, kutetemeka, kuumwa na viungo na uchovu. Alikimbizwa hospitali ya umma ambako sheria za COVID-19 uzingatiwa na ni salama kwa shughuli ya upimaji. Vipimo vilionyesha kuwa ana malaria na papo hapo daktari akampa dawa za malaria na kumshauri azimalize na ili kujikinga wawe wakilala ndani ya neti iliyotibiwa. Malaria husambazwa na mbu. Walio hatarini ni watoto wa chini ya miaka tano na akina mama wajawazito. Kupimwa na kutibiwa ni bure katika hospitali zote za umma. Usisahau adui malaria. Zero malaria huanza na mimi. Chukua jukumu leo. Komesha malaria. Ujumbe huu umelitoa kwenu na Wizara ya Afya. Mwaka mpya na vitu noma zaidi kwenye quickbeat.co.ke siku ya leo tunakupa von four bana gas cooker. Oh yes na tunakuambia ni rahisi zaidi enda kwenye simu yako lipa na Mpesa paybill number 4032353 4032353 kisha enda kwenye account ekelea kodi ni CK56 CK94 alafu amount ni 20 bob peke yake peke yake alafu kumuka utaekelea pin yako hivyo ndivyo utakuwa umekelea utakuwa umekelea bid kwenye quickbid.co.ke ni bidhaa bora zaidi kwenye bei ya nini Chini kwa chini. Hey. Chini kwa chini. Jiunga na Quick Bid ni rahisi. Enda kwenye Mpesa, bonyeza Paybill kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account, weka kodi ya bidhaa unayotaka na bid yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano, TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 20 tu kama idadi yako. Weka bid yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bid ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua. Quick Bid, bidhaa bora kwa bei ya chini. Next on sasa unakuta kuna watu wengine ambao hawapendi kuosha vile vyombo. Ametumia vyombo lakini amevurundika pale. Nini una gongea mlango hivyo? Take hizi mavyombo unaachanga hapo hivi kila siku. Eh mlango vyombo na mlango inaingilia wapi na kumgongea mlango hivyo? Unakuita na kuita uski. Mwende si uoshange vyombo wacha kuziacha. Hebu nikuulize kuna siku ushainyosha? Wantaka. Nikupelekee wapi ushazeeka? Ha ha. He he. Babu ana kwambia hivi. Klasi yangu hiyezi waletia kondogo kwangu
Welcome back. Thank you for staying with Business Insight. Let's now do the business. There are only 200,000 bags of maize at the National Cereals and Produce Board stores after the 4 million bags that the depots had were all sold out to millers in 2019 and 2020. National Cereals and Produce Board Managing Director Joseph Kimote hopes they will hit their target of buying 1 million bags in three weeks based on the deliveries being made in the North Rift area. Kenya does not currently have adequate maize reserves at the National Cereals and Produce Board depots after stocks were all sold to millers by early 2020. National Cereals and Produce Board Managing Director Joseph Kimote says the Parastato has been engaging the government on availing funds to buy maize from farmers for the national food reserves. Unlike in previous years when NCPB targeted to buy millions of bags from farmers, this time round, the Parastato is only targeting to buy one million bags. Our target was a million bags during this harvest season. Uh, we have opened our stores across the country and we have managed to buy approximately 200,000 bags. That is what we have achieved. But we are seeing a lot of trucks. If you go to Edward today or Moisbridge, you'll find a lot of trucks which are lined up actually to deliver maize uh, to NCPB. So we are looking at eating our target of a million bags uh, in the next uh, maybe three weeks or so. Farmers are flocking depots to supply the maize after the government increased by 200 shillings the buying price of a 90 kilo bag to 2,700 shillings. In addition, the waiting time for payment for maize delivery has been cut by two days. We have ensured that our stores are certified by AFA appropriately. We are putting the training and everything required in terms of the infrastructure for the grain intake uh, for that facility. That is why we also have the aflatoxin testing labs to ensure that we take in grain which is very quality in our WRA systems. NCPB is keen on leasing out its storage facilities with a capacity of 7 million bags of maize to the private sector in a new strategy aimed at weaning it off a reliance on public coffers to fund its operations. Right now we have leased close to 3.3 million worth of 90 kg bags to the private sector. And we have approached a few of the private sector operatives we have approached millers and other people involved in the grain business to be able to take up the space. And therefore, we are looking forward to achieving the target of 7 million worth of space in the next uh, six months. Officials say aflatoxin testing labs and modern dryers have been installed to ensure only quality grain is accepted at the depots. Betty Kiptum, Channel 1 Business. Now, drought and food insecurity has for long been the narrative for Wajia and Mandera. However, agrotechnology is helping change this as residents who are mostly pastoralists embrace agriculture. Some here have embraced greenhouses and irrigation, helping supply residents fresh food. When you think about Wajia County, what comes to mind? Most Kenyans associate Wajia with drought and food insecurity. In a community where extensive pastoralism has been the dominant economic activity, the tide is changing as locals embrace crop farming, like is the case here in Tarbaj. <laughs> Powered by the Mansa Irrigation Project, residents are now leveraging on community water pans and boreholes to grow crops. Kumbuka hawa ni wafugaji ambao ilibidi wafanyiwe masomo ya hali ya juu, wafanyiwe capacity building, ili waweze kukubali kufanya hiki kilimo. Na tukiangalia vile mradi wa manza unaendelea na hile miradi nyingine katika kaundi ya wajia, ni kweli kwamba wananchi wamekubali kufanya kilimo biashara. Previously, residents sourced farm produce from hundreds of kilometers away. But with this irrigation project, farmers like Ahmed Omar now harvest sufficient food for both domestic consumption 
and commercial production. Savani, Boa na tafuta wa uko wajia. Sahi ko krivi ya nini? Iri ya manza. Kila mutu natakana, unauza kidogo. Kila mama, kaweze, na watoto, unauza uza kidogo kidogo kama hii okayasi. Na vaida. Due to erratic rains, residents have embraced greenhouses to grow vegetables and fruits through drip irrigation. Hatu kujileta hapa kupata pesa peke yake. Tulikuja kujifundisha maana ya shamba ni nini. Ndio tusaidike sisi wenyewe vile watu wengine wanasaidika pia. Over 300 kilometers from here is Lehele Irrigation Project in Kotulo Subcounty, Mandera County. Residents here are now using water pans to grow horticultural crops. Haya mabao yanasaidia katika vitengo vitatu. Jambo la kwanza linasaidia kwa upanzi wa chakula, wanafanya kilimo. Jambo la pili, maji haya yanatumiwa kupea mifugo. Na jambo la tatu, kuna wananchi wanatumia haya maji kwa matumizi ya nyumbani. Water from this 100,000 cubic meter water pan is pumped to neighboring farms where residents are now growing drought resistant crops. Sisi kwa hapa shamba shamba hiyo unafaa sisi sana sababu yake ile matunda yanatoka sisi na peleka soko unapata pesa kwa hiyo matunda ya shamba yetu Irrigation and greenhouses has helped Wajia and Mandera residents to get fresh food from local farms, powering the pastoral community's race towards food security. We have been able to make sure that 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 wanaweza kufanya kilimo na wapate chakula cha kutosha kukithi mahitaji yao Steve Maina Channel 1 Business to see positive stories coming from that end of the country. Now, former World Bank country representative for Kenya, Mahtar Diop, has been appointed as the new managing director of the International Finance Corporation, effective from next month. In his congratulatory message, President Uhuru Kenyatta expressed his confidence in Diop's leadership, noting that under the highly accomplished Senegalese economist, the future of Africa's private sector as a key driver of growth and sustainable development is bright. Magda Diop, who is a former World Bank country representative for Kenya, is a career economist who previously served his nation of Senegal as a minister for economy and finance and the community of nations in various roles. President Uhuru Kenyatta expressed his confidence in Diop's leadership, noting that under the highly accomplished Senegalese economist, the future of Africa's private sector as a key driver of growth and sustainable development is bright. The president noted that as a member of the World Bank Group, Kenya benefits from its partnership with the IFC and assured the new CEO that the country will continue strengthening its ties with the Brenton Wood Institution. Diop replaces Philip Lehu, who stepped down in September last year after serving in that role for four years. Benson Ryoba reporting for Channel One Business. Now, February and March could be the ideal period for you to visit Watamu in Kilifi County for a tropical holiday. During this time, Watamu is ideal for outdoor engagements. Tonight on Magical Scenes, we highlight the magical Watamu. Welcome to Watamu, Cliffy County. This coastal destination is beautiful no matter when you visit. This February, the skies are clear and sunny. Daytime temperatures this month in Watamu are lower than 32 degrees Celsius. Watamu, a magical and peaceful village on the Kenyan coast, is nestled in a lush tropical forest. 
since it was first settled as a remote Swahili outpost at Gedi, Watamu has remained a haven of peace and tranquility and is still one of the coast's most natural areas. In a strange way, the coronavirus, because we haven't been able to travel overseas, it's actually let people learn how incredibly special Kenya is and how much we have to offer here in our own country for people on holiday. And so for us, it's actually really been a bonus because it's, it's let people come and explore what a wonderful part of the world we are. Whether your activity of choice is water sports, marine explorations, or learning about the corals, flora, and fauna, <laughs> then Watamu is ideal place for your tropical holiday on the shores of the blue Indian Ocean and the beach. We're seeing uh, more and more Kenya tourists coming to the coast. Our difficulty at the moment is uh, they don't like to come to a place where they can only drink in their rooms, but uh, <laughs> we're battling that at the moment, and let's hope uh, once we've, uh, as we prove that we've got all our protocols in place and uh, followed the Ministry of Health guidelines, that we are more than responsible for our plants and we can start serving drinks and uh, get back to the situation as normal. A lot of efforts are actually being put in the future to ensure that we work uh, closely with our stakeholders within the destination, to ensure that we, 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 we market the destination even stronger. We're actually encouraging our stakeholders to actually put a lot of efforts also in, uh, uh, in enhancing and enriching the, 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 the experience that our, our tourists are actually getting within the destination. Watamu Beach is ranked among the top globally owing to its uniqueness. <laughs> The sands are soft, ocean breezes gently swaying the coconut palm leaves and turquoise and the marine life completes your visit here. Irene Huchuma Odim, Magical Sins in the county of Kilifi. agriculture matters now. Farmers affected by the first wave of desert locusts are being given free fertilizer, an assortment of seeds and extension services in efforts to offset some of the losses they incurred. Here is our reporter Benson Rioba with the details. Late last year, the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, released an impact of desert locust invasion in Kenya report that revealed the extent of the damage caused by the first locust invasion on the country's food security. The report indicated that 213 hectares of cropland and over 579,000 hectares of pastures were infested by the locust. Those affected are said to receive free fertilizer, an assortment of seeds and extension services. <laughs> lakini kuweza kusaidia maisha iweze kuendelea kama ilivyo kwa hapo awali. Tumekuwa na nyinyi tangu uh, mwanzo huko. So CET ni mara huu tu ndio tumekuja sababu ya nzige tumekuwa na nyinyi na bado na wakikishia ya kwamba tutaendelea kuwa na nyinyi. The exercise will also see farmers access equipment to start kitchen gardens. Ewa, hata ukienda hospitali upate dawa. Mwisho wa siku ni kwamba uta, utahisi nja utataka chakula. Right now, the agricultural food which is, which is coming into Isiolo, to Samburu, to Marsabit and, and Wajia counties are all from Meru, Nyeri County and Laikipia County. The government plans to construct small water pumps and dams in affected areas to boost agricultural production. County unapoenda, kuna mradi wa maji. Sio maji ya kunywa tu, lakini pia maji ya kutumia kwa kilimo, kuweza kuinua hali ya maisha ya mananchi wa kawaida kwa njia ya kilimo. The project through the State Department of Agriculture, through DRSLP, 
ambayo tulijengewa dam ambayo kubwa sana ambayo iko pande juu pamoja na irrigation scheme at cost of 381 million FAO is calling on donors to help fund its locust kitty to assist mitigation effects of the pest on the country's food security. Benson Ryoba reporting for Channel One Business. To get Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 as your skiza tune, dial star 811, star 817 hash. Matthew 7:7. 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks the door is opened for him. To get skiza tune, dial star 811, star 817 hash. Star 811, star 817 hash. The stage is set for the next football star from Africa to emerge at the Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations. Watch all the games live on KBC Channel 1 as 12 countries battle out for the ultimate prize of becoming champions of Africa. Raw talent, raw skills, ultimate technique. From Africa finest and capped talent, witness footballing dreams come alive at the Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations from 14th of February to 6th of March 2021, live from Mauritania and exclusively on KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Welcome back. This is Business Insight. Let's now delve into the sports. Hosts uh, Mauritania secured their maiden victory in the Total Africa Under-20 Cup of Nations after beating Mozambique 2-0 last night to revive their hopes of qualifying for the quarter-finals. Meanwhile, Cameroon beat Uganda 1-0 at the Olympic Stadium to see the young indomitable Lions become the first side to book a slot in the quarter-finals. After beating Mozambique, the host stunned Mozambique after 19 minutes when Statman Mbarek fired his free kick past the keeper to give Mauritania the lead. Right foot on him. Here we go. No, it is, and it's a long shot. Oh, it's a beautiful goal. How about that, Uba, with the low strike? An absolute dream goal. Oh, look at the bench. Mauritania increased the advantage, adding a second goal through Sili Sangare before half time. Take the shot. Oh, oh, oh no. There it is. He's still in the back of the end there. Silly is the man. Silly is on it. Silly all the way. Meanwhile, Cameroon beat Uganda 1-0 at the Olympic Stadium to see the young indomitable Lions become the first side to book a slot in the quarterfinals. There's a little flick. Oh, it's a beautiful header. That is absolutely class, isn't it? A little flick and it's gone in. It's Tonight, Central African Republic will play against Burkina Faso at 10 p.m. East African time, a match that will be aired live on KBC Channel 1. Frederick Moki for Channel 1 Sports. Now, Tusker FC maintained their top spot on the Football Kenya Federation FKF Premier League table after ruthlessly hammering Poster Rangers 4-1 in a match that was played today at Kasarani Stadium. The Rangers had taken the lead through Ezekiel Odera in the 39th minute, but the Brewers grabbed an equaliser before halftime. Tusker added three more goals in the second half to claim the victory. Elsewhere, Karyobangi Sharks beat Vihiga United by a solitary goal. And Novak Djokovic's quest for a ninth Australian Open title received a huge boost after the world number one qualified for the finals of this year's edition following a 6-3-6-4-6-2 win over Russian Aslan Karatsev at the Road Lever Arena. Elsewhere, Naomi Osaka booked a slot in the women's final following an impressive win over Serena Williams, ending Williams' latest bid for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title. 
top rank Djokovic was playing in his 39th Grand Slam semi final against the 114th ranked Aslan Karatsev as he aims to bag his ninth title in Australia. Despite the Russians' resilience, Djokovic won the final four games to finally shrug off Karatsev, winning 6 3, 6 4, 6 2. You know, I'll definitely train one of the next two days. Um, probably more likely the one that is closer to the finals on Saturday. But, um, you know, recovery is, is priority right now. I'm, I'm feeling the ball well. I'm, I'm playing well. I had enough match play, enough practice. So right now it's just uh, gathering all the necessary energy for, for the most important match of, of Australian Open. Djokovic will face either Daniil Medvedev or Stefano Tsitsipas in Sunday's final, with both men trying to reach their first Australian Open final. Meanwhile, Naomi Osaka, who won the US Open last year, is now on course to make it back-to-back -back Grand Slam title after overcoming another start to beat Serena Williams 6-3, 6-4, denying the 39-year-old the opportunity to equal Australia's Margaret Court's record of 24 Grand Slam titles. The difference today was errors. I made, uh, I made so many errors today, so um, it was, honestly, it was opportunities where I could have won, I could have been up five love, and I just made so many errors, so... I don't know if there's any little kids out here today, but I was a little kid watching her play, and just to be on the court playing against her for me is a dream. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I, I've learned over the years is just like, you know, you're a competitor, you're playing against another competitor, and um, that itself is the funnest part because tennis is a game. Osaka will face off against American Jennifer Brady in Saturday's final, with the latter needing five match points to defeat Czech Republic's Karolina Muchova 6-4, 3-6, 6-4, and reach her first Grand Slam final. It was quite an emotional match there between Naomi Osaka and Serena Williams, but the sport doesn't stop there here on KBC Channel 1. AFCON Under 20 continues after this bulletin. That will come to you after the weather, the latest in the weather uh, news with Irene Muchuma Odim. My name is Betty Kiptum. Thank you very much for your valid company. My colleague on the sign language interpretation has been Lucy Moura. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. Good night. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Channel One Weather Updates. My name is Irene Mchuma Odem. Tonight there are showers accompanied by thunderstorms in the county of Kisumu, but that is just of a few places. This as the rest of the country is covered with partly cloudy conditions, save for the northeastern and southeastern lowlands where there are clear to partly cloudy conditions and that is how the night will be. Tomorrow waking up to a sunny day across the country, the northeastern will experience sunny periods, the northwestern will experience sunny intervals, also the Lake Basin region and western sector, but there'll be a few of wet conditions in Kisi and Kakamega areas during the early morning hours. The county of Nairobi and counties around the region will mainly be sunny. The coastal strip will experience sunny intervals during the morning hours. In the afternoon, sunny conditions will continue over most parts of the country, right from the coastal region, the northeastern, the northwestern, the county of Nairobi and counties around the region. But the lake basin parts of the country will experience showers accompanied by thunderstorms of a few places and especially around the lake. There will also be showers accompanied by thunderstorms in Eldoret and counties around the region. Temperatures, Mandera and Lodo will experience the highest across the country at 37 degrees Celsius. The capital will experience highs of 28 and tonight in Nairobi we're experiencing highs of 16 degrees Celsius. Let's now cross the borders and have a look at the international forecast. Good night and a blessed day ahead.
Vera Beauty College. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Fika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design and soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch, 0722-227428 Fika Branch, 0725-000-706 Meru Branch. Vera Beauty and Fashion College, a TVET approved institution. Jumapili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC ungana naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi Ningetaka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday today and forevermore he is able to take you to a place of abundance he is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ Kipindi ni neno la neema Ukiletewa naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose episode of Basi na maana wewe ni mkurugenzi. Basi hata huyo mkurugenzi mwenyewe akiniona hiyo anipigia magoti. Kwani mtu anahitaji kusoma ili awe chula? Kwendo chura. Una taibu, wamuitaeni mtu ambaye yeka sahihi ndege ili zipate kupaa chura. Ah nini nini nini? Hebu tuambie ni kuna nini? Huyo Burkenge anatoka na kuna mwaibongo Shantengu Mula Mimi ni mwimbaji Niko na miaka 8 Mimi ni msani na penda sana usani Mama yangu usilie We are going to read a book that has the title Thank you, Oba and Hanish is going to help me make a dog with love hearts This weekend on KBC Channel 1 Welcome to the party Ha! making my own creations to help me capture the slurs. Hello! I call them Hello, kitty. the Naughties. Yeah! <laughs> Deeply disappointing experiments. Nothing can...
Mauritania. And uh, this match here, it's uh, the second round of matches in this group. And uh, it's the Central African Republic up against Burkina Faso. And these two nations are looking to try and get their first win on in the campaign in this under-20 Africa Cup of Nations competition. Now that's taking place here on the west coast of Africa. Uh, 24 degrees. Temperature's dropped a little bit. There's a little bit more wind. And uh, as you can see, a little bit of sand in the air. Well, of course, we're near the dunes. We're near the Sahara Desert. Of course, there's going to be a little bit of sand around this part of the world. Uh, but it's not going to get in the way of these two teams producing some fantastic football. You can see the wind blowing the, the flags there. Uh, the four flags of the four nations battling it out here. Only Burkina Faso have actually uh, competed here in this competition before so they are the most experienced team in this group of course uh, earlier on we saw Tunisia beat Namibia two goals to nil both debutants just like Central African Republic Burkina Faso uh, fourth time that they're playing in this competition they are dab hands at uh, playing against nations in this category and they are looking for a win out here today just to have the experience and uh, I think that we need to understand exactly that uh, experience counts in these scenarios uh, to be perfectly frank with you uh, so let's see what the young stallions can conjure up out here today they played a really good game I thought against Tunisia Tunisia very technical but Burkina Faso very strong very uh, um, physical uh, some skillful players as well, a lot of home base players, but players who uh, will not settle for second best. Uh, they really put in a really good, strong performance, to be honest with you, against Tunisia. Tunisia looking very technically astute earlier on in the match uh, today against Namibia, uh, which was obviously a, a very fine victory for the North Africans. Uh, but Burkina Faso holding them in that first match. Uh, as for Central African Republic, a 1-1 match against Namibia in their opening game. Uh, leaves